Hey traders, checking into the stock market today and the cryptocurrency space. We're on the road here. We've got some poor quality audio and video, but the show must go on. So we're going to look at some damn charts. So we got the broader market consolidation that we were looking for all week and I was waiting to go aggressive on it. And of course it happens the day that I travel, which is a big bummer because we know that this is never going to happen again in the rest of my life. And the market opportunity is completely washed up at this point. Might as well quit now. Just kidding. In reality, we're going to see this another 150 times over the next couple of years. So I was able to get a couple day maker before I did hit the road. And I'll talk about some of the trades that I did take. But looking at the broader market, we had the four hour bull flag on these futures charts, which is where we ended off yesterday in the video from yesterday. And the question was, can the bulls confirm the four hour bull flag or do we set the lower high? To start the morning, we had the lower high set overnight. We held the low of yesterday. We had another lower high set, and then we rolled over into daily consolidation. So what does that look like on SPY? It looks like a red candle topping out on the bounce, and now we scout a daily higher low. We closed at the low of the day. Aggressive bulls scouting daily higher lows are going to be watching for hourly oversold conditions. Looks like we're bouncing a bit in after hours here, but tomorrow... Bull scouting daily higher lows are watching hourly oversold conditions. Any name that had a significantly strong bounce and a lot of space for that daily higher low to form, scouting hourly oversold. That's only what aggressive bulls are looking for. A patient bull is going to wait for an hourly trend change to set up. So let's just say that this was hourly oversold conditions after two days of pullback. We're playing fantasy land a little bit here. If that had to happen or did happen and an aggressive bull is in, Patient bull says, okay, that's a big enough bounce on hourly oversold. I'm going to look for an entry for the hourly higher low, and I'll have a stop loss to play off of the low of consolidation at that point. If we confirm the hourly trend change to the bulls, the daily higher low is shaping up and a nice low risk, higher reward entry on that consolidation. Those are the two ways that a bull is going to look for a daily higher low entry. Bears are watching hourly downtrends now in the short term, and they're going to have to see increasing bear volume if this pullback is going to be significant. Just looking at this daily chart, I can say that if the S&P 500, if SPY holds EMA support here, the bulls keep complete control. And you can even make the argument that if we hold that EMA support, it's a cup and handle where we fail to break the all-time high, we pull back for a daily bull flag, and then we break out to an all-time high. So I'm going to be watching what is our retracement size. Again, we've been looking at retracements this entire time. We know the bull bounce was massive retracement, well over 50%, up over 70, 75%. So now what does retracement consolidation look like? Is it a bull flag or is it significant enough that we're going to be looking for an equilibrium? If we are going to see an equilibrium, we will have to see increasing bear volume and a loss of the EMA support for a 50% retracement or so. And again, everything that I just said for SPY You can apply to a certain degree on a ton of individual names. They look a little bit different, but it's all the same concept. Looking at the NASDAQ four-hour futures chart, same deal. We had the bull flag attempt. We failed resistance. We held support initially on the morning, and then we rolled over into further weakness. QQQ is seeing daily consolidation underway. Look at the resistance on the NASDAQ. Yesterday during the live stream, I called it a quintuple top. But this is the zone. And even before this bounce took place, on our way down, we knew how important this zone of resistance was just because, again, this is where all the action is taking place. And look at all these tops now. Now we've got, what, three, four, five, six, seven, octuple top. I don't know if that's a word, but that's a lot of touches. That is the zone of resistance that we are keeping an eye on. So QQQ. We're looking for a daily higher low, a little bit of an uptick in bear volume. If we see a bear break of 392.99, we're back in gap fill territory. And again, we're watching retracement size. At this point in time, the retracement size is more significant on QQQ than it is on SPY. And essentially the way the last two days have gone, financial sector lead bear yesterday, QQQ XLV just fine. Today, QQQ, one of our lead bears, XLV still just fine, IWM week, XLF not as weak. So I'm just looking at QQQ and XLF down and up. And then today down and down a little bit, but holding up better. But watching for a daily higher low 
unless we see notable increasing bear volume. The only way we're not going to set daily higher lows on names that have bounced significantly is if we see increasing bear volume on a daily basis for a few days now. NVDA, so highlighted the inside bars in the market video yesterday. Just a really nice bear signal. Aggressive bears had a top fish we rejected from the high of yesterday by less than $1. And a patient bear had the inside bar bear break at 314 and both gave significant downside follow through. Closing at the low of the day and we're scouting hourly oversold conditions, which we got to at the end of the day. So if we were to see that hourly RSI, get beat up. Again, look how much space we have for a higher low. If the hourly RSI gets down into the mid to low 20s, I'm looking for a bounce on a name like NVDA. But really nice bear entry, and there were a ton of bear entries today out there because everybody, not everybody, but most names were looking for that daily lower high. So again, just looking back at the videos all week, well, not all week, last three days, scouting bearish on Tuesday, didn't get the setup that I liked, had a half day loser, Scouting bearish yesterday, had a couple little trades to get a CGC bear win. Scouting bearish today, wasn't really trading much, but this was the kind of day where you know it's coming eventually. You keep those losses small. You don't over trade too much trading counter trend. And then today would be the weak maker. You know, if you know the direction you're looking in, today's the kind of day where you can be a bit more aggressive add to winners on the way down where you're getting the follow through. You know, if I'm top fishing the last two days, I'm stopping out with small losses. If I'm top fishing today, the trade gives me a lot of follow through and I have the possibility to add to my position on 15 minute lower highs on the way down. That's when you go aggressive and you get your weak maker in one day. So the other two days of nothing and small wins and choppy action doesn't matter. You make up for it in one day when you get the setup you're looking for. Tesla, Daily lower high set. Look at that big old red Marabozu. So we're looking for a higher low compared to 950. We've got the hourly and oversold conditions. I'd love to see a gap down open. If I'm a bull, I'd be looking right in the other direction. I'd be looking for a daily higher low compared to 950, but I'd be looking to play that hourly oversold bounce. My style of trading would be if we gap down, I look to play the bounce. I look to sell half a position on the initial bounce. And then I put my stop under the low at that point risk-free. If that's the daily high or low, I nail it. If it's not, no harm. But nice big old drop. Again, QQQ leading the way to the downside. So we're watching our EV names, our semiconductor names. Keep those sectors compartmentalized. XLF, IWM, XLE. Everybody else over here. I've said enough times now. Some of you are going to throw up. XLV, bulls in complete control. That's a really nice bounce. Green every day. Weekly time frame, higher lows set as far as I'm concerned. So again, you know, the, the standard teaching practice is daily trend change confirmed to the bulls sets our weekly higher low. But you look at this candle and this bounce, that's our weekly higher low set. It's a significant enough move that we don't need the daily trend change to call it a weekly higher low. We know we're going to eventually need the daily trend change if it's going to see any follow through. Here we are heading to resistance. This is going to be a top fish play for XLV because we're extended to the upside with no daily trend change. And here we are testing 134.63. We rejected from it today. 135.34 is right behind it. So here's another top fish. Bears are going to be scouting a bearish entry on XLV. And we'll have to see a loss of the hourly uptrend to indicate daily consolidation is underway. And then there's tons of space for a daily higher low to form. Financial sector. So again, it was weaker. It was the weakest sector yesterday and it was red today, but we bounced a bit. You know, we didn't see the bears control the day. We opened lower, the bulls controlled the morning and we saw some consolidation into the end of the day. So we're scouting an XLF daily higher low, anything above 37.54. And just like all these individual names that we're watching, the bulls into next week must confirm daily trend changes on this bounce. We hit a fear bottom We bounced significantly, and now the bulls have to prove the follow through. And that goes for so many names. IWM, close at the low of the day. Hourly RSI, just getting to oversold, I assume. And we're looking for a daily higher low, anything above 212.71. Tomorrow's a fairly important day. You know, if you see another red day to the magnitude that we saw today on semiconductors, on EV names, on IWM, 
we're going to say, uh-oh, that daily trend change is now a lot more difficult. The best case for the bulls tomorrow would be hold the lows of today. But if we break the lows of today, the bulls need to shape up an hourly trend change in tomorrow. They need to have, or by the end of tomorrow, they need to have some lower wick on the daily candle tomorrow to be heading into next weekend for bulls to be looking for that higher low to form. CGC rejecting from daily EMA 12. Again, this sector just bouncing with the broader market. If this sector is going to see any kind of longer term momentum shift, we have to see consistent day in, day out, bullish correlation with the broader market. If we're just going to bounce when the broader market bounces, but stay weaker overall in a continued downtrend, we're not going anywhere. So same thing. We're looking at hourly oversold conditions. Look at that bear control on the day. Top Fisher's delight. But we're looking down at our support. USMJ did hold on a little bit better. A little inside bar there. But again, we need day in and day out bullish correlation. We need to go up more on the bull days and we need to pull back less on the bear days. And that is going to be a clue that I'm scouting. Crypto. So we were heading into this morning and I was able to say in the chat room, you know, watch the S&P 500. We have not started daily consolidation. If the S&P 500 starts its consolidation today, we know we're looking for it. We know it's coming soon. Crypto is positioned with a bearish correlation. We started daily consolidation yesterday in Bitcoin. So we know if the S&P 500 starts its daily consolidation today, that's only going to add further downward pressure on Bitcoin, which is exactly what happened. The daily lower high was set. That is what That was my second chance opportunity where I exited my swing positions. And now we're scouting daily higher lows compared to the flush lows. And again, we have a guide that we can look back at in May. And I'm looking at this right here. So big drop candle. And again, it happened a little bit faster, but big drop candle, significant bounce, daily higher low, lower high, higher low, sideways tightening range. We know to scout equilibriums after significant volatility. So we hit our low, top of the bounce. We're scouting a daily higher low compared to 41.9. There's tons of space for it to form. Watch the broader market for a daily higher low attempt in SPY. There's definitely correlation going on. Once we set the daily higher low, depending on how much pullback we get, we're then going to scout a daily lower high. We have the 12-hour EMA 12 resistance as a guide. We've been rejecting multiple times from it. We have the daily EMA 12 resistance as a guide. If we set a daily high or low, next time we bounce, we'll be watching for the potential of a lower high rejecting from EMA 12 on the daily. So watching for this range to tighten up. And again, all the people that were saying we're going to rally into the end of the year here. December's not over yet. This is what I was talking about where the, these patterns take time to play out. We have to tighten up on the daily. Even if this tightening daily range breaks bull, we zoom out, we scout a weekly lower high, and then we do it all over again on the weekly. We then scout a weekly higher low and tightening range. So it takes a while for these equilibriums to form and then break after volatility. But the bears have control in the short term. I did make a statement as well. If I did not have a long-term no-touch position, I would be re-entering what I exited on my swing position. If I had no exposure in crypto, I would be adding a bit here, anticipating that daily high or low. So again, scaling out of a swing position in the 50 to 51,000 range definitely would be comfortable starting to initially scale back in the 47s. But because I have long-term no-touch exposure, and because if I were to add back swing positions at this point, that would be me going aggressive. And this is not a point where I'm looking to go aggressive as a bull. I would much rather be patient. And if we see a bull break and I don't have any swing position, my long-term no-touch position benefits. But scouting daily higher lows, and Ethereum held on a lot stronger, but a big red catch-up day today, and we're scouting a daily higher low. We've got a support at 39.13. But again, tightening daily range where we have our high, low, lower high, and we're going to scout a higher low. You can condense it to the two-day time frame if that makes things more clear for you. Sometimes I like nice and condensed patterns, lower high set, scouting the higher low compared to 35.75. The crypto space is going to continue trading with impact from the S&P 500. So whether or not the S&P 500 can confirm a daily trend change from here is going to be key. If we were to drop multiple days in a row now from here, we would be looking for Bitcoin to do something similar. Again, it's not going to do exactly the same thing, but there are clues. 
And the clues today could easily have had you looking bearish in crypto today and just having that mindset. I'm looking red today because I'm looking red in the broader market and the crypto space is not positioned well if we see any downside weight on broader market consolidation. So trades I took today, I was at the computer probably the first hour of trading and it was just Interestingly enough, I was playing bounces today on the on the day I was waiting for the bears. I do have an X, SPXS swing position on again as a hedge. It's not a, a large aggressive position. I attempted an aggressive bearish position at the end of yesterday and was stopped out. And it would have been nice to have that position. Today would have been a weak maker if I did. But didn't want to hold that position overnight in case those were four-hour bull flags. I didn't like that risk-reward setup. But have a little bit of SPXS to, again, protect as a hedge, long-term no-touch SPY. I know SPY daily consolidation is coming. I can offset some of that pullback, but I was playing bounces just because of how ugly. Look at these crypto stocks first thing. And Bitcoin was not dumping at this point in time. 9.30, let's just look for comparison because, again, if I'm trading crypto stocks, I'm watching Bitcoin and QQQ. That's pretty much what I'm watching. And on the five-minute time frame at 9.30 a.m., Again, we were dropping, but this drop was not massive. You know, this drop on Bitcoin for the first 15 minutes is 1%. And the drop on MARA in the first 15 minutes was 7%. So it was an absolute free fall. And posted in the chat room, hey, I'm watching these, you know, five minute crushed RSI levels. The MARA, five minute RSI got single digits. The 15 minute RSI was probably down in the teens at that point, but just started, I waited patiently and I wasn't in any rush because we weren't extreme anywhere else. You know, the hourly RSI was not extreme. So the only way I'm going to play these bounces is if the short term levels get real extreme. I'll be more aggressive as a bounce trader if the hourly 15 minute, five minute are all oversold. But if the hourly is not oversold, write this down. If the hourly is not oversold, I'm way more picky on those shorter time frames, unless we're in a back burner scenario where we're in a, a raging bull market and all dips are being bought in back burner bounces. But we're just looking for a daily lower high on MARA. We're not in a back burner scenario. So if the hourly RSI is not oversold and we're in a daily downtrend, we've got to have crushed short term RSI levels for me to be looking to take a bounce trade based off of RSI. And that's what we got. So I made my first scale in 42.50. I said I will scale in to a break of 42 psychological and then I will place a stop based on dollar risk. So I had my initial entry in the four, mid 42s. As soon as 42 psychological breaks, I buy again. And again, I've said many times there are psychological breaks that occur at climax levels. And this was another example. 42 breaking marked the low. So that second entry that I had, and when I'm looking to make two entries on a bounce play, if I can have my second entry be at the bottom, then I am real comfy in that position. So that was the case. I placed my stop under 4160 and the bounce got going. And I exited the bounce fairly quickly, just locking in nice gains. I did have a pretty decent sized position. I was fully in two positions, which means I'm not adding anything more. I'm out of ammo. And so I exited fairly quickly on the bounce. And then we had, we set a two minute higher low. I had it back on the two minute higher low and then another little quick flip. And then I was done with it. As soon as you cool off that five minute RSI, I have no interest in this trade anymore whatsoever. The five minute RSI is the only reason I was in this trade. So we then set a five minute equilibrium, posted in the short room that there was a bearish entry for the five minute lower high. We tightened up sideways and it ended up being a bear flag that rolled over with significant further downside. And that's when Bitcoin was getting ugly on the day. As soon as I sold on this five minute bounce, I went right over to BKKT because BKKT on my screen was showing me minus 14%, big red. All right, we just had a big bull move yesterday, minus 14%. I'm interested in a bounce. If I can see something that I like, there's the big green day yesterday. We gave a lot back. So as soon as I head over, to see what's BKKT doing on the two minute time frame, I was punched in the face with a setup. And what do I mean by that? I mean a very clear high risk, nope, low risk, high reward setup. It was right here, this two minute drop. And we had just held, I said, well, there's my bottom fish. All right, I'm in 1445, I'm in. Stop under 1420. If that's a two minute higher low, I have a great entry. If I stop out, I'm gonna get back 
maybe 25, 33% of the MARA profit that I just made. We change the two minute trend. I sell half into that move, stop under the low of the day, and I leave the door, leave the computer out the door to catch my flight. And I don't do anything. And I don't do anything. There were nice, nice multiple opportunities to bottom fish there. We had a nice 15 minute. No, it wasn't a 15 minute. Yeah, it was. 15 minute equilibrium. High of the bounce, higher low, lower high, higher low. That was a beauty. A beauty. But I was in half a position and not doing anything because I wasn't at the computer. And fortunately, before getting on my flight, I looked right here and said, okay, well, I was looking for, I held half a position for the possibility of a four hour higher low back testing EMA. But I know we are not likely to break that high of yesterday. So I sold at 1650, missed that little spike to the climax, but man, it was so frustrating. I had so little internet speed on my phone and just waiting for the pages to load and knowing that BKKT is extremely volatile. You know, even just four minutes is an eternity with BKKT. But I did get it off in the 1650s, not ideal, but I'll take it because the entire move was given back. So that was a day and a half maker on that half position, probably a two day maker total there. I might've had more than a two maker, two, two day maker today. I would have to go back and look but MARA was at least a day maker. It might've been a three make day maker day. That's all we got. I hope you're well. Hope you have a great weekend. Don't forget to do good things. I'll still put out some member content over the weekend. On to the adventure series. So now we got chapter five as we are heading across the country. We left off in Missouri, skipping across Kansas, heading to Boulder, Colorado. I've been on the road at about a month at this point. And in Boulder, I had lined up a spot for woofing. And I've talked about that a few times, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. And they have every end of the spectrum where you have full-fledged farms that go to markets and you have just older women living by themselves who can't keep track or can't keep up with their garden and the yard work and the hard labor and splitting wood and they just need help. So you exchange 25, 30 hours a week of labor for room and board. And I cannot stress enough how awesome this is and how everybody should do it. And I've done it maybe six different times around the country and it's completely immersing yourself in someone else's lifestyle. So, you know, learning to forage mushrooms in West Virginia or discovering, you know, secret little watering holes up in Northern California. There's just so much, even the books that people have and reading their books in the downtime, eating their food and watching, you know, how they incorporate the local produce that's that's out in the woods you know scavenging around and how they put you know lamb's quarter in their meals and things like that you just learn so much so quickly so i would generally break it up i do a month on the road then i do maybe two weeks of woofing and that allows me to have a bed and you know have a shower and have nice food when i was saying i was min living minimalist i definitely was where you know i was eating cold cans of soup in my cars at some points so when you get a nice home cooked meal that can make all the difference in the world. So after a month, I was heading that way towards Boulder. There were a couple things in Kansas, but the green is what you want to see because green is national parks, national forests, places to camp. And you can see Kansas is just void of all of that. And it's really flat, but it's nice when you get close to the West border and you see the big looming Rocky mountains ahead. And it's just this constant growing excitement and excitement grows with the size of the mountains as you approach them. This was one of the stops in Kansas where we had an overhang and some kind of barn swallow, mud swallow, birds were making these little nests and they were just going nuts. And I said, I love observing nature, but just watching, you know, a hundred of these birds whip in and out of here and chattering and just party time and uh, watching how they all interact was very interesting. And they had some of these dead forests that are swamplands. And I always like these landscapes. I think it's a nice, cool, eerie uh, spot. Nice sunset reflecting off the dead trees in the water. So then getting, there's a fuzzy, blurry baby bunny, but got over to Woofing. This was her house. This was her backyard and just incredible view. And my job was to take care of Nina, who was a border collie mix. And she just wanted to work. She wanted a job. She wanted to run. So my job was to take her out for you know a half hour every day throw her the ball and just run with her. 
So that was a, an awesome task. You know, part of my 30 hours is just, you know, seven hours a week taking this dog out to play with her. And she loved playing with that ball. So in the backyard, we just had raised beds. So again, it's not a farm. This was just a little homestead and it was just a, a single woman who needed some help. And so she has all these beans growing here and garlic and probably eight different beds that had been pretty well established and, and run for years. And then around the other side of the house, there were all these perennials and cool flowers and things. So it was an awesome house. And after being there for a week and, you know, just doing my routine and getting ready to, to keep going on my way, she gave me the offer. Hey, do you want to house sit? I need to leave for a month. And do you want to hold down the house and, and keep the plants alive and take care of Nina? And I said, absolutely. So I went and adventured in the Rocky Mountain National Park and explored a little bit of Colorado and then came back and stayed here for a month and explored Boulder. So that was a nice, pleasant surprise that certainly extended the time of my road trip. But that's another great thing about road trips where, you know, if you don't have to have these hard, fast plans of when you have to be in point A, point B, I was just drifting. You know, I knew I wanted to hit up this destination, that destination, but whether it takes two months or a year, that doesn't matter. And it's the kind of thing where some of the best spots that I went to on this entire road trip were from word of mouth, from other hikers saying, hey, you need to check out this hot spring. You know, it's just three hours down the road. Next thing I know, I'm staying at this hot spring for planning on two nights and I'm there for four nights because of how awesome it is. So just being able to completely upend your plans and be very versatile and free flowing was a very awesome experience as well. So next time we'll check in and go through some Colorado adventures. Again, Colorado and Utah were by far the highlights. So much to see and so many things to do and so much nature and some great people. So I hope you do good things. Have a great day and we'll see you Friday. That's nice.